Hi everyone. So this is the sort of beginning of lab mini lecture that you normally would get in your lab class. Uh, so this week's experiment is called experiment number 11. It is a lab where we demonstrate conservation of momentum. And what you'll have in this lab is you have an air track. Okay, and there's going to be at least one car on the air track. Initially, we're going to let that cart go down and back. We're going to measure the momentum and then we're going to do some follow-up experiments where we have this cart hit uh, other carts of various masses and they might bounce off each other or they might stick together there's there's different measurements that are that are going to be done um, to visualize this i strongly encourage you to take a look at the other video that was posted um, not from our lab but uh, someone else basically did a very similar experiment. It's not surprising. This is kind of a standard conservation of momentum lab. And they have posted um, basically their example. So you, you can see the actual air track in, in action in case, in case you can't visualize what it is that I'm talking about here. In terms of the, the physics that you need to remember, you've learned all of this. But just to make sure we're on the same page, remember that the momentum is typically denoted with the letter P and it is for a single object uh, it is defined as the mass of that object times its velocity and for a single object right the momentum is going to be pointed in the same direction as the velocity so velocity is a vector we're multiplying that by mass which is a scalar and that means that momentum itself is a vector okay important thing to remember is that momentum is conserved and it's, it's conserved as a vector, right? So if there are two components, if we have a horizontal component of momentum, then I have some initial system uh, so that is comprised of some number of objects that each have some horizontal component of momentum. Those might be positive or negative. I can sum those together and I get the initial momentum. And that is going to be equal to the momentum of the final situation. So whatever the deal is with those objects after all the collisions happen, um, we can sum the momenta of those objects and that sum will be the same. Here, this lab is one dimension, so we don't need to worry about uh, the second dimension. But in principle, if, if we were moving in two dimensions, then we'd also have to worry about, about that other, other component. Uh, a, a key point with momentum being a vector is that the direction does matter. So for instance, if I define the positive x, uh, or the, moving to the right is positive, then I have a positive momentum if my dot is moving to the right. If the dot is moving to the left, then it has a negative momentum. Okay, that's just because we've defined in this example going positive or going to the right as a positive momentum. So keep that in mind when you're when you're summing up your momenta in your initial and final situation that the direction of the objects does matter. The direction of motion of the objects. Um, we'll do uh, different types of collisions in this lab. So there will be elastic collisions where the objects do not stick together they bounce off each other and here kinetic energy is conserved so the initial kinetic energy is equal to the final kinetic energy we'll also do a completely inelastic collision where the objects stick together and then lots of kinetic energy will be lost so in that case you would not expect kinetic energy to be conserved um, if you want to be extra prepared for this lab then i encourage you to review the lecture notes for lecture 14. That was the first momentum lecture, and that'll pretty much cover everything you need to know. Um, some of the highlights would be um, this particular slide if you're in the afternoon section. Uh, I'm sure there was a similar one for the morning section. Uh, just describing what happens if two objects of the same mass, or sorry, if, if, if two objects collide elastically. We have object one, is initially moving, object two is initially at rest. And so the question is what happens to the velocity of uh, object two and object one, depending on whether one and two are the same mass, or one is heavier or one is lighter, and this kind of tells you what happens down here. And there's the actual equation. This is for the final velocity, relating the final velocity of the two objects. Um, in terms of uh, types of collisions, this is also a really useful problem to review where we have the railroad cars colliding and sticking together. If you know how to solve this problem, then you'll be able to do most of the calculations or probably all the calculations for this lab.
So I'll just quickly going through the, <clears throat> the mechanics of the lab, the steps that you need to take. Uh, so there's, there's uh, several parts. So the very first part is we're basically just checking for momentum conservation of one car. So what you're going to do is you have this cart, you're going to weigh it, and, and really all the data is provided for you. So the cart was weighed. And then the idea is that the cart was allowed to glide down the track, bounce uh, off of a spring essentially at the end and come back. And there were four different times recorded for a single trial. So when the cart goes down and back one time, that's a trial. And so the four times that were recorded is how long did it take for the cart to traverse this one meter distance? And then how long did it take for it to traverse this distance? And then again, those two distances, and that makes that makes four times the time it takes to go one meter. And so you can calculate the momentum for each of those, and it it should be um, relatively unchanged. So that, you know, how do you calculate the momentum? Well, if you have the time that it takes to cover some distance that you know, then you can get the velocity, and because you have the mass of the cart, you can get the momentum. So then the next step is um, we now are going to do a collision. So we're going to add a second cart onto the track. We're going to put it right here in the center of the track. And this cart will have the same mass as the initially moving one. And so what's happening here is this cart's going to move. Um, someone's going to time how long it takes for the cart to traverse this distance, section A, the initially moving cart. And then uh, a collision is gonna happen and we're gonna measure how long it takes for the initially not moving cart to then traverse this distance over here. Okay, so then again, <clears throat> you have distances, you have times, you can calculate a velocity, you have masses, you can calculate a momentum. And in case you can't read all the text here, this these slides are included at the end of the uh, general lab introduction that's posted on Mount Kappa. And then the next step is we're gonna we're gonna mix things up. We're gonna do basically what we just did, where we have an initially moving cart and one that's initially at rest, except for this time, this uh, initially at rest cart is gonna be heavier. Okay. And so then you're going to record times it takes to traverse different distances um, when you do a collision with the heavier cart. Then now step four, the part four rather, is we're going to do what we just did where we have a lighter cart that's initially moving. It collides with a heavier cart that's initially at rest. But now the carts are going to stick together. Okay, and you're going to have this combined, this combined mass here, mass one plus mass two it's going to take some amount of time to cover this distance. You can use that time to get a velocity, and you can use the combined mass and that velocity to get a momentum. Oh.